Hi guys, this is Liz Shot from Scarlet Moon Creations and I am back with a brand new tarot video as you can probably tell from the top down view here. Uh, this is me doing a tarot tag, the 22 Faves tag. Now, you have to forgive me as the time of recording this, I do not remember who the original tag creator is, but I have a link down in the description below with their name, um, their channel, at, so you can go and watch the original video. This tag has been around um, for quite some time, and uh, it got popular again recently and I've been wanting to do it so I'm like here for vlogmas since it's ready I actually sat down and went through all of my tarot decks and picked out my 22 faves uh, 22 faves is you're picking out your favorite major arcana cards from each deck of all the decks you have one for each card <laughs> archetype if you will and i did that and i've been holding on to these for a while i have my list i have my cards okay my favorite fool card is from a new to be deck the light seers tarot and i just how can I not love this card? Just, I think for me personally, this really, this imagery embodies like that full energy better. Um, I picked this deck up because it's a modern tarot deck and this is a modern girl. Um, and it's showing like that modern spirituality uh, as well. I love that um, she has this crystal in her hand. I love that we see the sacred geometry down here and that she's kind of doing a truss fall backwards off the edge of the cliff rather than being la-di-da <whistles> on her way on a trip, not paying attention to what's in front of her and like kind of walking off it stupidly. And so, yeah, that I appreciate. That's my favorite fool. My favorite magician. So, this is going to be the first of many where I could not choose just one. So, please bear with me here. <laughs> uh, first off, from the sorry Afro-Brazilian tarot, I have this one and this guy before i move on is i just want to make sure i have the right name yeah baba lao and the priest of divinatory cult of ifa he cast the opele the necklace of eight kernels here into the opon the magic plate He's got, in order to find the Odu or path and determine the future, he is being touched by the gods here or the spirits here. And I really enjoy this interpretation of the magician. But I also really like the Llewellyn Tarot's Magician, who, so in this uh, tarot deck, it's uh, based on Welsh mythology, and the major arcana cards uh, usually are depicted by specific mythological figures. A couple are events. This one is Widian, who is definitely a magician in Welsh mythology here. And we still have the altar with the symbols of the four uh, suits, but in a very Welsh way. So those are my fave magicians for completely similar or different reasons. I'm not sure. 
Now, the... My favorite High Priestess. This was really hard because it's one of my favorite cards in the deck. Uh, one of my favorite Major Arcana cards, no matter what. But I had to go with the Herb Crafters Tarot, the High Priestess, Mugwort. When I tell you... Oh, this is... Let me gather myself. This is a new to me deck, the Herb Crafters Tarot. And I actually spent a lot of the past year studying Mugwort, even before I got this deck. So when I opened this and was doing the, you know, first impressions and I saw Mugwort as a high priestess, I was like, this makes so much sense. Like, so much sense. Mugwort as a plant, like here in the U.S. anyway, it grows everywhere. And it's kind of ubiquitous, but and some t quite annoying uh, to many. It's considered a weed, but when you take it, it has that uh, feminine energy. And I don't mean like that binary male-female gender thing, but like... A somewhat passive energy but it also is very useful for helping you get uh, to the other side of the veil to helping with dreams and with trance work with these spiritual untouchable amorphous things that it's so it makes sense to me that it is the high priestess in this deck, and I couldn't choose differently. Now, the Empress. The Empress. Another difficult one. But I decided to go with the Empress from the Spirit Keepers Tarot, Gloria Mundi Arania's Gate. I mostly picked this because of the imagery, which even saying that seems kind of ridiculous because... When is the imagery for the Empress not like, oh my god. So, just to give you some background, this Empress um, is inspired by Wu Zexian, the only woman in Imperial Chinese history to rule a dynasty. Here, Wu Zexian is appearing as the goddess Hotu, the Empress Mother Earth. So, Still earthy vibes, and I appreciate that duality, the Mother Earth, but also, like, the ruler of a dynasty, right? For the Emperor, I, we're back again, I couldn't quite choose between more two here. So first we have from the Spirit Keeper's Tarot, the Emperor Commander of Intellections. And this deck is also pretty new to me and I'm sure you guys know Benabel Wen's decks. And it's very esoteric, chock full of detail and whatnot. So I don't know these cards just yet. But uh, this, it says, pictured here is Menelikai, Ethiopian emperor, son of the biblical king of Solomon and queen of Sheba. He, behind him is a golden eagle, symbolic of the heavenly father and the Ark of the Covenant. So that is who that is. I just really, it was hard not to pick a matching pair, empress and emperor. On this, the other emperor I really, really love is from the Lightseer's Tarot. This guy, very modern, but like they're even similar. Like putting aside the coloring, you know, the reds and oranges, that warm tones and things like that. Just I feel like the way they're seated, the beard, obviously, you know, people of color here. And I, I'm just, I'm with it. I'm with it. I feel like they're the same. Maybe reincarnated here. Uh, so how could I choose an emperor between the two of them? The next is the Hierophant. And 
not my favorite major arcana card by a long shot like definitely bottom three in general but this hierophant i like the most and this is from the good tarot not a traditional hierophant by any means so that helps a little bit she's giving a mix of high priestess and magician vibes here like all of the elements are on the table and kind of the moon the crescent moon and the way she's standing and things like that i i don't know and her waist is snatched but i'm trying to remember what exactly it was about this one that did it for me Like, the guidebook says to remember to be committed to your spiritual practice and ritual, daily practices, that kind of thing. And I think that come across that comes across here. I also feel like this, I connect more with this idea of a hierophant, the tradition being passed down and having a regular practice that is ritual, ritual and repetitive, but the type of thing that I would do, if that makes sense. So that's where I feel I picked this one because I connect with it better. Yes, I do have some latent Judeo Christian monotheistic issues. Um not 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 too bad though. The lovers I picked the thought tarot. And the lovers can get, I feel, pretty repetitive deck to deck. Um but this one I like the duality. I the the almost marriage ceremony that we're seeing going on here the union being brought together being witnessed by these this higher powers and maybe even lower powers the the animals the children coming together the birth of the new egg and you know being witnessed and uh sealed by these figures and I, this works for me. The Chariot. Deviant Moon Tarot tar Chariot. Um, I have some pretty cool chariots. This is the coolest. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Hands down, I picked this because this one is the coolest. I also like that, I didn't realize it for very many years, but I feel like this has, um, this ability wrap here. To an extent. This is like a wheelchair. And. Yes. This being is just a head. But it's still moving on. It's still getting things done. It's still armored up. And ready for battle. And. I think that's really cool. For the strength card. And we're doing this. In Waitsmith order here number eight strength line strider tarot this might be the only line strider card in here which i'm a little sad about but i do need to get to know that this deck still more i the imagery is a little less intuitive uh, or obvious for me so i just gotta do some more readings but this strength card i like because i love all the artwork in this deck that's why I got it, but I like that they are together uh, here, the girl or the woman and the lion. They're facing things on together. I also feel like, I'm trying to, like her eyes are closed, but the lion's eyes are open. And I know some people don't like this deck because the eyes don't have pupils, but ignoring that. Um, like she is putting her trust in this lion and 
so what for? Like, they can get through things together. And I really appreciate how this is depicted. The Hermit card I picked, Thought Tarot, again, here. Um, again, hard. Some really interesting and cool, beautiful Hermit cards in the various tarot decks I own. But the Hermit in this one just works best for me. Um, I feel like it's more dynamic than the usual standing around or even the the Light Seer's Tarot where girl is floating in the lotus position. I just feel like this is more interesting, more dynamic. Like the light fracturing, the bending of time and space, it feels like even so we've got the egg here there's that sense of aloneness that sense of like inner landscape still without being as obvious i think the wheel of fortune again could not just choose one so the light seers tarot i have this wheel i like the kind of a modern aspect of this where we're seeing the chips from like a, a casino game and them flying up I like that she's you know doing the tree pose on the top of one the dice around her neck and the various symbols here and there and we still have the things that we see on the traditional uh Wade Smith deck card but it's like wherever the chips may fall things may change the balancing on the wheel as it turns is really difficult and I like that these uh powers these black and white swirls almost from the high priestess card show up here even though I didn't show that card in this video. The, oh, put it away. The other one I really like is this one from the Deviant Moon Tarot. And it's kind of fortune telling, more like, but still gives that same vibe. Um, I like that there's some obviousness going on here. Like, oh yeah, you want to talk about love or death or what's your fortune kind of thing and I don't know she's in control of the wheel but you gotta pay to find out how it's going so there's a shadow aspect there then I've got for the justice card not a fave of mine at all so I went with the simplicity tarot balance and fairness keeping it simple works. Also, I love that this is a black woman or a uh, woman of color and her hair. Like, this could be me. Justice is blind here. That is what I'm used to. I respect other perspectives though. But I, I as far as this particular card and archetype imagery goes, I prefer this one. The Hanged Man. Okay. We've got the Hanged Man from the Llewellyn Tarot, which is uh, Enchanted by Dyfed. And this is, I believe, Pridery? Pridery or is it Peridor? Uh, uh, Quill, sorry. Jesus, they, they have all these P names. Quill, um trying to save his land his country or whatever he ventures into this uh enchanted town of Dyfed, which is kind of frozen and he winds up touching this brazier thing in the back there and then he gets stuck hanging there frozen in this box i i just i love this deck for the Welsh mythology and how it fits so well with the tarot and 
this is, I feel like, a different way of thinking of the hanged man that I really enjoy. Death. DV Moon Tarot. Like, I love the death card in general, but this one, this one is a lot. Um, <laughs> but I feel like it's so obvious. It, it, it's obvious to me because I grew up with my dad saying, jokingly, like, let's not say any bad things about my dad, but um, that he would put us back where we came from. <laughs> And my mom being like, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> and so, like, the opposite of death is birth, obviously. So, like, trying, the baby trying to go back and just, would be a duck, right? And mom is just like, oh, hell no. But there's also the implications of this child not being born alive. I don't want to say the A word or the S word. So... Yeah, but that's why I love it. And there's that joking aspect <laughs> for me. Guys, please, I'm sorry. My upstairs neighbor has decided he's going to practice his electric bass, so please excuse that. The <clears throat> excuse me, temperance card that I prefer is the Thoth Art card. I, I like the balance here. More importantly, I like the alchemy here. I feel like this card makes more sense than the waiter, excuse me, the Wait Smith version. And yeah, like we get that dichotomy, that calm demeanor, but we also get the mixing, the inclusion of all these things uh, to create something of interest there. So that's why that's my favorite. Okay, next. For the Devil card from Llewellyn Tarot, I've got the Horn One, or the Wild Herdsman. Now this guy is uh, where the traditional Christian devil idea kind of draws from, this archetype to that archetype. The horn one just works for me in my spiritual practice. Uh, I work with him quite a bit, and so there's ties there, there's a bond, that connection, so I automatically like this devil more than others. The wild herdsman, the wild hunt, that kind of thing. Just this quite often with this deck these cards work for me because of the mythology attached um i like this depiction this archetype better than the devil 100 percent. not even gonna lie um also from the llewellyn tarot is bala lake the tower i'm not a huge fan of the tower uh in any of my decks you know not not because of you know what the card means but the imagery i'm just like meh about most of them i like this one because it's different artistically also i like it because it's different bala lake is uh one of those myths where suddenly it's like the earth come, gets back at you. And the ruler of this town, this city, whatever, they were greedy and did a lot of injustice to the people. And one day they gave this great expensive banquet with all of their other rich uh, people, probably nobles. And there was this whisper on the wind you know, telling those who were serving them to kind of save themselves, and they did, and then the whole town wound up under water. Sudden flash flood storm type of thing. So there is a similarity to the biblical great flood, but it's, it's a much smaller. Though this is not the only story like that within Welsh mythology, so 
it is what it is. But it is like that sudden destruction aspect from a slightly different perspective. Maybe a deserved one? I don't know. Next, uh, the star. My favorite is the Spirit Keeper's Tarot here. The healer, Gifts of the Spirit. And I knew who this was as soon as I saw it because, you know, the lotus, the the little, uh, what do you call them things? Vases. Like, how do I not recognize Kuan Yin? Impossible. And she's called the healer here, which makes perfect sense. Uh, the seven stars are there, but I... The star card is sometimes really difficult for me to, like, what? But I feel like seeing Kuan Yin is definitely a archetype, a spirit, a being that I immediately understand as appropriate for the meaning for the star card. And she's the Bodhisattva, the Buddhist Bodhisattva of mercy and compassion. And the healer, I like that term a little bit better than the star as it is. I understand why the star, but you know. And all right, the moon card. Here's where I start to get a little ridiculous. Again, I could not decide. And I kind of showed on my Instagram account a preview of this 22 phase by telling you how difficult it was for me to choose my moon and sun cards. So maybe I'll, I, I'll, I'll uh, you can check that out also in my, my YouTube shorts. I gave a preview of this video. The first moon card that I chose, because I couldn't pick just one, is also from the Llewellyn Tarot. It is the Lake of Maidens. And this is actually what I call the uh, Blodaya with card, because it's about her, basically, her story. I think we could have just went with that, but I understand why it's depicted like this. Um... Blodiawith is the fairy face, a woman made out of flowers that was created to be married to a man. And um, she wasn't human. He basically left her alone a lot and she wound up, you know, being bored and wanted to find true love. She found it in this other guy and they figured out how to kill her husband and and so they thought, and they did, but they got caught, and she was turned into a, a an owl. She had also had help from her ladies' maids, and they were turned into fish under the full moon. So this woman didn't ask to be born, and yet, here we are, transformed once again. And I just love that story. I love uh, Bladai with... Oh, before I put it away. The other moon card. The Lightseer's moon card. This is amazing. I feel like this truly explains like the depth, literally. The going through to the other side of emotions of feeling of ritual, I don't know. In my head, when I take my ritual bath before I have circle, this is what I'm doing. This is what I picture. And this has stuck with me ever since I first saw it. So they both have a, a spiritual connection for me. Now, they're truly ridiculous. I need to make sure I have enough space here. Uh, because I could not choose just one or two fun cards. As you saw. First up, I've got the Herbcrafters Tarot, Sun, St. John's Wort. When I 
pulled this out, I was like, holy shit, this makes so much fucking sense. As an herb, like, it is vitality and healing, obviously, but so much vitality, but also, like, the sunshine, yellow flowers, how when you make a tincture or a syrup or a tea with this... It turns like this sunshiny orange red color. Like, how could this not be the sun? It is radiating with life always. Move that over there because I need the space. The other sun card I have is from the first I'm showing from this deck the Universal Goddess Tarot. This is a Matarasu as the sun, and obviously, that makes whole lot of sense Japanese goddess of the sun to be very generic about it um, but just everything about this says I am the sun the next I have here is from the good tarot not a one sun card that I don't love keeping it a hundred percent same with the moon if I'm being honest um, I love this. She is just golden. Living my life like it's golden is what comes to mind when I see this. Like, I'm the shit. I am powerful. I am beautiful. I am the shit. I am bountiful. I am beneficial. The sunflowers help it all. Like, so those are my favorite sun cards. Not one better than the others. Almost there, guys. Almost there. The Judgment card. This is probably my least favorite card in the Major Arcana, Judgment. First of all, the name. I don't know how to get past that yet. So, there's that aspect. But, um, and while I do have other decks that have renamed this card, I still feel like this particular one speaks to the meaning artistically best for me. This, these are the sleepers, like, and someone has come to awaken them. This is, uh, again, obviously from Welsh mythology. And you may know this story from Arthurian legend uh, somewhere in Wales. Arthur and his men are sleeping, waiting to be awoken when the world needs them most, or at least Britain needs them most, apparently. But that makes more sense to me than what quite often looks like zombies being raised from the dead. By a angel. Angels never really did anything for me either. So, my favorite judgment card because this artistic depiction makes the most sense uh, to what the meaning is supposed to be. Last but not least, the world card from the Simplicity Tarot. Now, I could have used the, uh, what do you call it? Wade Smith. I do have a version of that here. But I don't like that artwork. So I have the Simplicity Tarot. And like I said before, sometimes simple is best. Like direct. This speaks to what I need to know about this card. And she is, you know, celebrating the completion and ready to go forth. It's kind of like she's born into the new cycle of things as well. But I also like that the esotericness is not completely gone from this. You know, we have the baby, the eagle. The baby does not look too weird. The bull and the lion still. So, those are my 22 faves. This was a really long ass video. Why can I never do short videos? Why is that impossible for me? I, I do not know. One last thing I wanted to go over with uh, before I end this video is the fact that um, the numbers here, uh, 
wasn't the most important thing when I was picking these out. Uh, though I did think I mentioned towards the end, I was trying to fight against the want to be fair. Let me pick something from a deck I haven't. But every tarot deck that I have is not included here and that's okay but the one i use the most cards from is the llewellyn tarot i use six cards from here followed closely by the um white seers with four cards the spirit keepers the thoth and my deviant moon tarot each I use three cards from and then the good tarot the simplicity tarot and the herb crafters tarot I each use two cards from and then these three guys only had one each the afro brazilian tarot the nine strider tarot and the universal goddess tarot and i'm not gonna lie these are the ones i use the least so far um a mix of how long i've had them like this is one of my oldest decks so uh this though is one of the newest Definitely one of the oldest. I've had this for a really long time too, but hardly ever used it. And very brand spanking new. <laughs> These are all relatively new to my collection in the last year or so. So that was just some interesting random stats I wanted to include there. Because this is kind of like a video diary, right? <laughs> but, um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you've done the 22 faves video yourselves and how did that work out? Were you able to pin down why some were your faves? I have no problem, like, admitting that's some of these are just really pretty and yeah that's why I like it like this gorgeous 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 but yeah like this video if you liked it subscribe if you are new hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is coming whoa and you know share so I can, uh, I guess, increase my following here on the channel so my channel can grow. Help me out, guys. Help me, one Kenobi. You're my only hope. You're not, but still. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned, but links in the description to all of the decks I've mentioned here and to, as I said, if I can find them, the original creator, or at least someone who I've recently watched, uh, who's done this, but you can follow the hashtag so that you can find other people's. Will I be doing my favorite, my favorite minor arcana cards? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I've forget what that hashtag is called but I will be doing it not anytime soon <laughs> but it's gonna happen and so subscribe for that thanks to my Etsy shop and a 10% off discount code because I do offer readings with these decks and others uh, that I do like they just didn't have one of my 22 faves. So, you can get a 10% off discount code to a reading from me through my Etsy shop or purchase any of the nat all natural bath and body products that I make for spiritual and mundane purposes. But that is it to for me today, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>